Hello, welcome to what's new in Reaper 6.13. It's kind of a smaller update, but there's a lot of noteworthy uh, bug fixes and changes that we're gonna cover in this video. And before we get started, I just want to remind you that um, I am not affiliated with Kakos. I don't get paid to make these videos. Um, I get paid through the support of you guys watching it, seeing the ads, um, becoming channel members or patrons, uh, or buying any of the courses on my website. So if you want to support, those are the ways that you can support. All right, let's get into the video. The first change log line I would like to cover is action list reduce rescript and custom action button redundancies. What does this actually mean? So this all comes down to a minor reorganization of the buttons at the bottom of the action list. So instead of there being two sets of actions like rescript new and load or custom action new and edit, there's now a, a button called new action, which covers scripts and custom actions and loading the script. And then if you have a custom action selected, um, the edit button will bring up the custom action, or if we go to a script, we take a script and hit edit, then we get the options of editing it in the default IDE or in our external editor that we've set up. And again, very minor changes to the key map button. So we've got the import, export, export selected, and restore button in here. Action list, auto-populate editor with selected actions when creating new custom action. So I'm gonna select a couple of these items at random from the action list. And if I go to new action, new custom action, those actions that I selected will now be in the custom action editor. So again, it's one of those kind of things that were almost expected behavior, but it's going to make custom action editing and uh, getting started making custom actions a lot simpler. Add actions to insert envelope point at current position and not remove nearby points. And add action to add or edit envelope point exactly at cursor. So I'm gonna take this action, insert new point at current position, do not remove nearby points. So I'll assign that to letter U. And I'll close this for now. I can park my cursor anywhere. I can press U and it puts in a point there. So if you were looking for an action that would put in a point without having to click on the line, there's your action. And if we search for add slash edit, low point exactly at cursor, this is another new one. And so I'll assign that one to you. This one, if there's a point already there at the cursor, it will bring up this window. Or otherwise, we can press it to create a new point, bring up the settings window so we can choose a very specific number like, let's say, plus three with a square shape, or a linear shape, or a bezier shape, and change the tension. Up next, we've got support pasting files from explorer slash finder directly into a range view. And this is something that feels really natural to do, so you just take any sort of media that Reaper supports, whether it's a, an image, a video, an audio file, you can copy it, we can paste it in, uh, depending on the type of file, you'll, you might get an embedded uh, tempo information, things like that. If you have multiple files, it may prompt you to, uh, for, to for what to do with it, to put them end to end, to put them across tracks. So yeah, I just copied these items and hit paste. And we're going to ignore the tempo in this one and put them on separate tracks. And there we go. We've got the three items that I had selected put into the timeline. Up next, for recording, there's now support for automatically creating folders, including based on wildcard substitution for recorded files. So if we go to preferences, audio recording, and in the file name for recorded files, we now have the option of putting in the folder uh, name with slashes to get specific folders for the recorded items. So this is really cool if you want certain tracks to go to a certain subdirectory within your projects folder, you can now do that. So you're going to go to wildcards and go to wildcard help. And right here, this is the new stuff. The dollar sign folders and dollar sign track slashes wildcards will automatically create directories as needed if the track name contains the slash character, the uh, uh, forward slash character. For example, if the track is named drums forward slash symbols 
the drums directory will be created. So as an example for this, let's do uh, dollar sign track slashes dollar sign rec pass zero zero zero. Um, that is going to give us a folder called drums and then a file name called symbols 001 because this track is called drums slash symbols. Uh, so yeah, let's actually just record on this. All right, so I'll hit record. Now this file is in a folder called drums symbols L1. So I don't think this is something that every user needs to be using. It's not extremely intuitive. Um, you may not like that it clutters up the track names, um, but definitely for certain types of workflow, I can see this being useful for game audio, Foley recording, perhaps, just to keep the files organized into separate folders. It's all automatic. You don't need to manually organize the files into folders and then have to relink items and things like that in your projects. Uh, seems like a pretty useful thing. All right, in the last two things that I'll show you today, in the render window, support forward slash for creating a folder in target file name and add dollar sign folders wildcard for rendering or recording to create disk folder structure based on track folders. So here we go. Um, I've got a bunch of tracks selected. Um, some of them are child tracks, some of them are parent tracks. And with the render window set to source stems selected tracks, and I guess I'll do time selection as well. In the file name, we can set this to folders and then forward slash track. And so we, if we look at our six rendered uh, files, we get one track called parent one, a folder named parent one, and then child one, child two. So let's just run this. It'll just take a second, less than a second. So the parent one and parent to renders uh, any of the tracks that were the folder tracks, those got rendered to the main project directory. And then the child tracks got put into uh, separate parent one and parent two folders. So it was already possible to do like dollar sign track slash uh, dollar sign track and select all the tracks. And then you would get a new folder named for the track, and then you'd get a file with the same name inside. Or you could just do something like export. And now all these files go into a folder called export with their with the track name as, as the name of the file. But being able to use the, the project folder structure uh, as the file folder structure is a pretty cool and interesting way of exporting files. So that's about it for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. There is more stuff in the change log if you want to check it out. Uh, you can go to the help menu or you can browse it on the Reaper website. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.